Welcome. I'm uh, Dr. John Lindbergh. This is Ask the Doctor. I'm the medical director of the Wound Care and Hyperbaric Oxygen Center, as well as Rehab Services uh, here at uh, Emanate Health. So today's talk is Wound Care and COVID-19. So I broke this down into three. First, I just want to introduce our Wound Care Center here at Emanate Health. I'm very proud of it. I've been the medical director of it for, oh gosh, over 20 years now. Um, but then go into just basic wound care, things I think people should know out in the community, like how to manage that wound when you first get it, sort of the do's and don'ts, the red flags, and then finish up with the COVID-19 sort of pandemic, how it's affected wound care, maybe directly, but even more so indirectly affected wound care. So that's sort of how I broke this talk down. And then, of course, we'll answer questions afterwards. So just to start this uh talk going, what we'll do is we're going to start with just introducing the Wound Care Center here at Emanate Health. Uh, it opened in 1998. I've actually been the medical director since 1998, amazingly, uh, located here at Intercommunity Hospital, um, and it's comprised of an outpatient wound care clinic, but attached to it is a hyperbaric oxygen center. And we'll talk a little bit more about hyperbaric oxygen uh, on another slide. It is a physician-run clinic, so every patient who goes to the wound care center is seen by a physician and managed by a physician who has wound care training. Also, the nursing staff was nice about the wound care center. They're all wound care certified as well as hyperbaric oxygen certified, so they're really a comprehensive support team around you. And the key with wound care centers, what I think is most important, is multidisciplinary focus of care. It really, before 1998, before we opened up, Wound care typically was done in, um, in silos. A lot of different people doing it, not a lot of integration. What wound care centers do is it really brings um, that multidisciplinary, a lot of different specialists which need to be involved in wound care, all integrated together under one roof, one stop shop. And you really just see the effectiveness, the efficiency, uh, time to healing speed up quite a bit. And lastly, state-of-the-art wound care centers. What's, what's been nice here at Emanate Health is they've really supported us getting the state-of-the-art technology in our wound care center uh, from treatment and technology uh, for diagnostics. And I'm gonna talk about three uh, in a few slides. Um, just quickly to the common patients we see, a large percent are diabetic foot ulcers. Absolutely, it's like about one third are. Another third are venous leg ulcers because compression therapy is so critical. It has to be put on uh, someone with training. Um, wound care centers typically are very good at that, but we have also a lot of other wounds. We have traumatic wounds, post-op wounds, uh, pressure ulcers, insect bites, and that's just a few. So really any wound that's just not um, healing with that initial measure, basic wound care, we really uh, recommend them go to a wound care center. Now, just those three technologies, hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy, we have that here. It's 100% uh, oxygen under two atmospheres pressure. And so what the key is that pressure. We're gonna hyper-concentrate that body with oxygen. We'll probably get about 10 to 20 times the amount of oxygen to that wound with hyperbaric. It's very simple. There's a picture of the tank. You actually will lie down flat on this gurney. You'll slide in, it's clear, you can watch TV. You have an intercom system right here. You'll talk to the nurse. And usually the, the treatments last two hours, it's every day, Monday through Friday, and usually initially for 20 sessions. So it is about a four week uh, commitment of time, but it's great for especially complex diabetic foot ulcers. That's by far the majority of patients we see. Chronic bone infections are common, radiation tissue, uh, certain infections, but diabetic foot ulcers by far the most common. And again, extremely effective, well worth the time, certainly saves limbs. And we've seen it over the last 20 plus years. Diagnostically, we have fluorescence angiography. It's a very unique technology where it actually allows us to show the circulation or the perfusion at the level of the skin. Uh, what's nice about this, we inject, it's a fluorescent molecule. We do have to have an IV. We do it in the wound care center, but what's nice about it is safe on the kidneys, safe on the liver. It's out of your system in 15 minutes. So by the time you even leave the wound care center, you don't even have the fluorescent chemical in your body. But what's nice about us is it even it gives us a picture of the perfusion at the wound itself. Not just the big arteries, but what's actually getting to the wound. As a wound care professional, that's really important for us to know. Um, and what's nice too is we can do objective measures. So we can get speeds, rates. So what we can then do is repeat the test in let's say four, eight weeks and see, are we making gains? Are our advanced technologies, our hyperbaric, are we doing better? So um, it's really a great technology. Again, we're sort of a center of excellence in that, in the whole nation. Uh, we've been doing that for so long and have so many uh, 
uh, treatments or diagnostic testing. And this is just a picture of one just to show it. Um, this is where you're lighting up. We have a laser that's pointing at the skin. This is a diabetic foot ulcer, and I'll stop right there. But what you're seeing here is those two toes are very black. That's not getting oxygen. This is very bright. That's where there is an infection. So this is giving us a gauge of pl you know, like places on the foot that are inflamed, maybe due to infection, and some that are ischemic or lack oxygen that are black. This gentleman went through hyperbaric oxygen, IV antibiotics, six weeks. Those toes actually turned bright again, and all that bright brightness went away. He still has both toes. He's walking around with diabetic uh, feet. Saved his limb. He was told he would need a baloney amputation. So again, great technology for us. We can get a, just a snapshot real time of the foot and start to track it. And then the last uh, technology we have is application of skin substitutes. And this is really also the latest trend in non-healing wounds. So we used to do split thickness skin grafts a lot, uh, take skin from the thigh, move it down to the wound. We really don't do that much anymore because of these skin substitutes. And there's animal, human sources, but we could do these in the wound care center. Some can be or should be done in the OR, but a lot can be done in the wound center and we do these. And they're actually fairly easy to do. On the right, I sort of show a very simple, where it comes in this almost like a rice paper. You put it on the wound, cut to, cut to the size of the wound after you debride it. Just put a nonstick dressing, stereo strips, leave that on for a week, have them come back. And it's amazing how fast that wound can heal. And these are wounds that have not healed for, for months. So again, these are like just three of many technologies we have to really treat these complex wounds that come to us, make sure they don't get stalled out, plateaued, go on to healing and certainly save limbs. And so to wrap up the Wound Care Center, it's just a great resource for the community. Please use it if you need it. Um, amazing technologies, great staff, multidisciplinary. You really can get uh, very effective, fast treatment for uh, complex and simple wounds. Uh, as far as uh, now moving on to the, the topic of basic wound care healing. And this is uh, a section where giving you tools on what to do at home. If you have a wound, certainly if you're diabetic, maybe some thoughts on how to manage that wound initially, if you can't get to a doctor right away or to a wound care center, but also some red flags, things to think about, why they can get bad in a hurry and, and when to really seek care. Picture of the skin, think of it almost as three layers, very top epidermis, dermis in the middle, maybe subcutaneous in the, in the deeper layer. If it's on the very surface, those wounds do tend to heal. These are very superficial scrapes. You typically won't need to see us. Once you get into that second layer, and certainly the third layer, typically those are going to be problem wounds. And, and certainly, again, if you're diabetic, you have any other immune system, difficult to offload, those are typically ones you're going to want to come into the wound care center. And this is the phases of wounds, uh, four stages of wound healing we all know in wound care. And the reason I bring it up is really what a wound care center is doing or anyone who's trying to heal a wound is we're really trying to set the stage for the human body to heal itself. Because the human body is almost miraculous in how we can heal wounds. Um, but what a wound care center is trying to do is really just optimize that, make sure it's effective, moves through these four phases to completion and doesn't get stalled out and certainly doesn't go backwards. That second phase, we go hemostasis, inflammatory. That inflammatory phase is where a lot of wounds just start to get stuck. And that's where infections, and that's where you can start to lose limbs. We wanna get that inflammatory to the proliferative, which is where you're building skin. And then it will go on to remodel over months to years. So what, what are some ABCs? What are some things to think about at home? These top three are the ones I wanna talk most about. Uh, moist wound management is a big one for me. That's something people just don't commonly know on how to manage wounds. But manage bacteria, that's another big one. You wanna, you know, our skin has bacteria all over it, but you have to manage how much and what type of bacteria. I'll give you some tips on that. Proper offloading. If you're a diabetic and you have a foot ulcer, offloading is number one. You have to get off that wound and I'll talk more about that. These last two are really ones that you're gonna be doing with the doctor. Manage medical issues affecting the wound. Clearly diabetes management is a good example, but it could be everything from nutrition, could be your kidneys, your liver, your heart and lungs. They all interrelate to wound healing. So you have to really optimize your whole body to really maximize wound healing ability. And this last one, we just that's just a ABC of a wound care center or anyone treating wounds is you wanna remove devitalized tissue, uh, scalpel, curettes, 
scrape it, there's enzymes. You have to get to good granulation tissue to really heal a wound. But again, those last two I won't talk as much about because you really have to be in a wound care center or with a physician at that point. But these top three, let's go into each one. Moist wound management, so you're at home, hard to get to a wound care center or you're, you're nervous to get to a wound care center, nervous to get to a doctor. The key principle is to keep the wound bed moist. So the key thing is don't let it dry out, don't let it get wet. So let's talk a little bit about each of those. If it dries out, it's gonna scab over, it's, the skin just can't grow over that. So what the answer is, is you add moisture to the wound. And here's an example over here of a hydrogel. That's a wound gel, it's over the counter, you can get that at CVS Walgreens, and you can add hydration so it doesn't dry out. And you can tell by looking at it, maybe from an angle it's drying out. You can use an antibiotic ointment for that, uh, for that point just to, just to wet it or just to get it moist. Let's say it's really wet. The challenge with wet means it's gonna affect the tissue around the wound. It's gonna let bacteria build up and that bacteria builds up, which we'll talk in the next slide, then you have a risk of infection and clearly a non-healing wound. So what you're gonna do is you want to increase the absorbency. You wanna get that, that drainage into the dressing off the wound so you don't macerate, excoriate the skin. And so you're gonna not use the gels or the ointments. What you're gonna use is more the dry dressings that are absorbent, and you're gonna change the frequency more often to make sure it doesn't get too wet. So again, dry wound, add moisture. If it's wet, add absorbency, and you're after moist. And just think of that, and you'll, you'll be far ahead of the game as far as getting that wound to heal. Bacterial management, so all wounds have bacteria. If I swab a wound, I'm gonna grow something because our skin has bacteria all over it. The key thing is how much bacteria and of course what type of bacteria and to prevent it from getting into deeper tissues. So there's specific dressings we use, certain things you can think of. If you get an odor to the wound, it looks a different color, it's really copious drainage, you think there's a lot of bacteria, you want to use a dressing to calm that bacteria down or get that knocked down. You're not going to eliminate it, but you're going to decrease it so it's going to allow the wound to heal and decrease risk of deeper infection. We use things such as silver, there's a delayed release iodine, as well as just an antibiotic ointment. Here's some, up here, this is an alginate with silver. This is an Acticode, it's called. These are silver dressings that are good for high, hydrating wounds. We're gonna absorb that dressing or that drainage and we're gonna have an antibacterial agent combination. Iodazorb is a delayed release iodine. That's a good one because it's very antibacterial. It's really good for moderately to hydrating wounds and it's, it doesn't harm good skin. Bactrobans at the very bottom, we use that commonly for low draining wounds. Wounds that are gonna dry out, but we wanna decrease bacteria, certainly maybe in diabetics. So again, so what you're doing with initial wound care, sort of triage, is you're gonna make sure it's moist and you're gonna be looking for bacteria overgrowth. And if so, you're gonna add something to the dressing to calm that down so it doesn't lead to infection and you still promote. And those two really are, are interrelated. And in wound care centers, that's almost every visit you come to a wound care center. Those are two big ones that are in play on how to manage a wound for any visit. But, and lastly, for, for the diabetics in the audience or anyone with a diabetic foot, load, foot ulcer, uh, offloading is number one. That's like the golden rule. If you don't get off the wound, I don't care how good you are in moist wound management, bacterial management, it's not gonna heal. It's actually gonna high risk of getting worse. So there's a variety of ways to do it. If you're at home, initially, crutches, a front wheel walker, or a knee scooter. These knee scooters up here are fantastic. We love those. Not always paid for by insurance, uh, cost about $100 to $125, but they're outstanding with offloading the wound because if you can float that foot in space, you've done, that's like 100% offloading is fantastic. But a lot of people live alone. They have to walk to the bathroom in the middle of the night. They need other options. These diabetic wound, share, wound shoes down here with these hexagonal cutout foams, they are over the counter. A lot of insurances pay for those, but those are great ways to offload a wound, still allow you to function short distances, still not wanting you to walk long distances on, on a foot ulcer, certainly in a diabetic. Then if you go to a wound care center, we go all the way up to total contact casting. We'll build these crow's boots. We'll really get a very offloading boot that still allows you to walk a little bit, but really will offload it almost as good as a knee scooter would or crutches or a walker. But the key thing, full circle, is if you have a wound, if it's on the bottom of your foot, especially if you're diabetic, get off the wound. Then focus on moist wound management and, of course, bacterial management. 
These next couple slides are just to bring then finally a point, these red flags, and just to bring a point on this slide that wounds are complex. You see a wound on your foot, on your leg, and you imagine it's very simple, it's limited to the skin, it's easy, let's just put some Neosporin on it, it will go away. But there's so many things that go into why wounds heal, why they don't, why they get worse. Circulation is a big one, arteries and venous, not just arteries. Uh, sensation, if you have a neuropathy, that's huge. You can't feel the wound. The wound will get worse in a hurry. You won't even know because you can't feel it. A lot of orthopedic dysfunction, if you have any orthopedic deformity of the foot, the toes, the midfoot, flat arch, those all go into it where that's going to affect wound healing ability to um, get a wound to turn around. Diabetic control actually has been shown to actually allow wounds to heal faster. And nutrition, vitamins, or certain amino acids, but just a good nutrition vitamin supplementation is needed. And then the others are, the others are just, again, to point out that wounds are complex. There's a lot of variables. And again, that's going back to the wound care center. When you go to a wound care center, we know all these variables. We're gonna optimize all those so we can get that wound to heal as quick as possible and certainly make sure it doesn't get worse. So just the takeaway on this slide is wounds are really actually very complex, so they may look very simple to you. Um, and then we get in the diabetic foot ulcers, and my statement on the top is, is so true. I would consider all diabetic foot ulcers complex. I don't care how small, it's only been there for a few days, you're at risk. I mean, the thing with uh, diabetics, you have a neuropathy, you can't feel well, the wound could have been there forever, could have deeper injury that you don't even know about. Circulation impairments are very common in diabetics, especially the small arteries, uh, ones you can't even do surgery on, and that will cause the wounds to get worse rapidly. Uh, your immune response isn't as good, so you have higher risk of getting infections and deep infections and certainly then limb loss. You get more foot deformities if you're diabetic, putting stress on areas that are difficult to heal. And the hospitalization limb loss risk is clearly elevated. And then this is a graph to the right where basically you see if a foot ulcer is admitted to the hospital with an infection, you can almost by far, they're diabetic. Um, very, very few foot ulcers with infections, if you're non-diabetic, actually end up getting admitted. They're almost diabetic. So again, that point is to really get to the problem early. Don't let it get to that stage of hospitalization. Go through all those complications, all those complexities, optimize all those, get the wound to heal fast, and you're gonna prevent that hospitalization. Because this last slide is the consequence of chronic non-healing wounds. And again, maybe just to bring the point home again, that if you get a wound that just doesn't turn around, doesn't heal, you've been trying to heal at home, it becomes chronic, there's a ripple effect of that. Clearly infection leading to sepsis is a big risk. Um, but additional wounds start to crop up because you're trying to offload this wound and it's chronic. You get deconditioned, your heart, your lungs, you're not as active, all of a sudden you can't walk as far, that's not good for your heart. You start getting more joint deformities because of the way you're walking. Your fall risk is definitely increased, hip fracture risk then with that. And depression's a big one. I wanted to bring that up because Chronic non-healing wounds, you're stuck in the house, you're not able to see friends, family, do hobbies, go to work. Um, you're off work for long periods of time. Depression's a big one we see in, in chronic wounds. And so we really, more reason to get to the wound fast, get to a wound care center if you need it, get that thing healed so you can get back engaged in life. Diabetes have control, wounds will affect diabetes control. And then lastly, gangrene and loss of limb. That's the, the major goal of a wound care center and certainly uh, in diabetic wounds is to save the limb, preserve the limb, try to preserve and don't even allow gangrene to set in. So that's a big one. That graph to the side, what brings that point home is if you have a major amputation, and this is that black line over here, the five-year mortality risk is, is 50% um, in five years. If you take all cancers together, and you do a five-year mortality, you're at about 25 to 30%. So a major amputation in a diabetic, a below knee or above, you have a higher mortality five-year risk than if you combine all cancers together. So the key thing is don't even get close to that level. Get to the problem early, get that wound healed. Don't even put your risk of depression and chronic immobility and deconditioning. And just to wrap up the talk then, talk about wound care in this pandemic, COVID-19. And there's some direct issues related to wound. I'll have one slide. But I think the indirect effect on wound care is the big issue in, in this pandemic. Direct wound, the direct issues of wounds with COVID-19, there are some specific wounds that do occur because of COVID-19. Here's a picture here 
Now, these purple lesions that can occur, they're typically for people who are very sick. These are for people who are in the ICU. And it's because of blood clots. You have a coagulopathy, you get this sort of blockage of blood vessels to the skin, you get this purple look. It's actually hard for wound care nurses on the floor sometimes to tell this between a pressure ulcer because they, they can look sort of similar. Um, but those are out there. Pressure injuries, obviously, for any illness that causes immobility. I don't care. It doesn't have to be COVID-19. That's an issue. And any virus, a lot of viruses can cause rashes, sort of vesicular blister eruptions throughout the body. So those are some direct wound care issues COVID-19 sort of brings to the table if you're in the hospital especially, uh, more so than if you're, if you're managing at home. But the indirect impact of COVID-19 um, is, is huge. It's the delay of care. I mean, what we're seeing in the wound care centers, people are coming in with much more advanced wounds um, because they were fearful of coming to the wound care center. Uh, they've been trying to manage it on their own. Uh, they have very limited supplies, limited help at home. And they come in and, and their limbs immediately at risk on day one. And we're having to really triage that wound very, very rapidly. But there's also the delay in getting to the primary care physicians, and that's affecting wound care because what happens is diabetes is out of control. They're not getting their diabetic management. Their hemoglobin A1C is drifting up, for instance, and, and that's causing the wounds to get worse or, or to increase risk of a wound. It's what's the impact of COVID-19 is even just transportation, having family taking you to the wound care center, family helping you uh, with uh, wound care. Uh, is sometimes limited because either they're quarantined, they're helping other family members. There's a lot of challenges because of that in wound care. But in, I think the last one, again, almost going back to depression, fear, anxiety, is people just aren't prioritizing the wound we see. They're so fearful of COVID-19. They're so panicked with other issues going on in their life. They see a diabetic wound or they see a wound that's not healing, but it's just such a low priority and unfortunately, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And finally, they come in. And again, we have that delay of care. But in the slide to the, or the, the information to the right slide is just to let you know, if you have fear of coming in, let's say, to our wound care center, Emanate Health and our wound care center has done amazing jobs, just um, almost just heroic jobs in creating a safe environment for you. Not just the temperature checks, the questioning to get into the facility to begin with, all patients have to wear masks. All staff have to wear N95 masks. We're cleaning the rooms in between every patient. The waiting room is clean periodically throughout the day. We limit the uh, amount of patients per hour so everyone's social space, so the waiting room will never get full. We've really done gone far and beyond and to really create a safe environment, to really let you know if you come to the wound care center, if you need us, don't delay. It is really safe uh, to come to our wound care center and to come into Emanate Health. And just don't delay care because we are seeing many more wounds that are really delayed when they get to us. And just to wrap this talk up before we get questions, the goals of a wound care center, uh, preserve limbs at all costs, coordinated effort, extremely effective, under one roof, high-end technology, save limbs. That's by far number one. But number two is a close second, expedite healing of wounds to allow patients to maximize their health and quality of life. Get people back out there in the community. Don't get that chronic wound that lets people just hunker down at home, start to lose friends, hobbies, interests, not going back to work, deconditioning. That is really almost a very close second. Not just heal the wound, but heal in an expedited fashion. And then lastly, create a prevention strategy so they don't even have to come back to see us. And that's a really big goal of a wound care center. Whether it's diabetic foot ulcers, specialized footwear, getting to uh, specialty healthcare resources, venous leg ulcers, compression, several ways to prevent strategies. And those are the big three that we really want to make sure we always are achieving if someone comes to our wound care center. And the very last slide I have for you is I was reading our mission statement at Emanate Health and going over our goals to the wound care center. And there's just so many analogies. I just wanted to bring this up as a conclusion to my talk. This is the mission statement of Emanate Health. And if you read it, Emanate Health exists to help keep people well in body. So just take that to begin with body. Wound Care Center, we're helping to save limbs, not just save limbs, but heal wounds and not just heal them, heal them fast. So we're really here to keep people well in body. But that second one, mind and spirit, that's equally important in my mind. Get that wound healed fast, get people out in the community, back with friends, family, back to their hobbies, interests. Don't allow deconditioning. 
So from a wound care perspective, keeping people well, body, mind, spirit, that's sort of a mantra of what we're all about, but then provided in a quality healthcare service that is safe. And that's where that last slide I talked about, all the strategies we're taking here at Emanate Health is really keeping this safe. This is really going far and beyond to make sure you're not at risk, you shouldn't have fear, you should seek care, get care early so you can get on with your life and get back out there in the community. And that ends my talk. Uh, thank you for listening. I think we're now gonna go on to some questions and answers. So first, first question we have is why do diabetic foot ulcers occur? And that's a great question. Because it's really a lot of different factors go into it. Um, what happens typically in diabetic foot ulcers is first off, the most common early problem is a neuropathy. And even though you might not feel numbness of the foot, you actually start to lose very subtle sensation. So that's one, one thing where you're not even feeling the skin. And what happens with that is you have excessive shear force. So you start to build up callus. On top of that, you start to get little sort of blockages or sort of um, limitations in the circulation to that area. So now you start to decrease the oxygen and the nutrient supplies. On top of it, sometimes your feet can have sore slight deformities as you get further down with diabetes. And all those can lead to these ulcers that sometimes again, early on can look actually fairly mild, but they might be very deep and you just don't know it. And certainly they can progress fast. So again, multifactorial, di any small diabetic foot ulcer it should be complex. You should really get to a wound care center very quickly. Does having an open wound make you more likely to get COVID-19? No, it doesn't. Uh, COVID-19 does not go through a wound. It's certainly, it's, um, you have no worry about getting COVID-19 systemically uh, via an open wound. So you don't have to worry about that at all, actually. Um, I think, again, the COVID-19 aspect to wound care is, is clearly just making sure you don't delay care, in my mind. And if you, again, are in the ICU, there are some specific wounds related to COVID-19, but no, you can't get COVID-19 through a wound. If I am diabetic, do I need to check myself frequently for wounds or ulcers? Absolutely. If you're a diabetic, you almost first thing in the morning, you make it almost a routine like, like how you brush your teeth in the morning, in the evening. I would say too, even after, if you go for a long walk, if you all of a sudden decide to go to the grocery store or Costco or whatever, you go to an amusement park when they're open again, um, any long outing is a good time to take off your shoes periodically and look at the skin because you can see immediately there might be some red spots. Uh, areas of callus are at risk areas. So I would recommend if you're diabetic, you should be checking your wound, if not two, three, four times a day, certainly after long walks as well. And if you have a neuropathy, you should be getting yourself into diabetic shoes with custom inserts to prevent wounds because that will disperse the weight throughout the whole foot and not concentrate it on certain areas that are common in diabetic foot ulcers. Can having COVID-19 prevent my wounds from healing? It really, as far as COVID-19, it depends what wound it is. Now, if it's a pressure ulcer uh, related to COVID-19, you have to offload it. If um, COVID-19 in of itself, I mean, it can cause, like I, I showed those purple lesions, those are very unique and actually not that common. Um, and those are just treating the blood, the blood clotting issue with medication and offloading as well. But as far as beyond that, COVID-19 is really more related to the immobility it may cause, which then secondarily may cause a wound due to the immobility of COVID-19. The other issue might be nutrition though, if you aren't getting good nutrition, good protein, vitamin uh, mix, that could also actually put you at risk just due to malnutrition. What is a pressure injury? Pressure injury is typically where there's a part of the skin, commonly over a bony prominence, um, that basically when you have pressure sustained over a period of time, what happens is that pressure can start to sort of press down on the blood supply, the little capillaries, and then create an area with that lacks nutrients, lacks oxygen. And that over a sustained period of time starts to break down tissue. Then it causes inflammation because your body senses that, wants to repair it, will start sending white blood cells, sets off a cascade, and before you know it, you start to get a wound develop. And again, sometimes it becomes deep very quickly 
because of the pressure. You don't really know immediately. So the key thing with pressure injury is you just, if you have an at-risk area, if you're a very thin individual, for instance, you have a lot of bony prominences, you're at a higher risk. So you have to make sure you uh, offload those areas, certainly if you're going to be in one position for a long period of time. Next question, if you get a bruise, what causes the colors we see? How can I care for it? If you have a bruise and there's no skin breakdown, the bruise is just blood that's in that tissue, soft tissue that's coagulated. And what happens with blood, it will change colors just because as the blood breaks down, it will start changing from a purple down to a brown. It's just the red blood cells are starting to break down and resorb into the body and completely leave the area. So really, if you have a bruise, just know that that skin's more fragile during that area of bruise. That skin is gonna lack uh, tissue nutrients because of that bruise. It's gonna be more fragile, so it's gonna be more susceptible to a pressure injury. So if you happen to lay on that bruise for a long period of time, it could break down. If you traumatize it, um, if it's on the bottom of your foot and you bruise it, certainly you would offload it. Um, but bruises in general will just go away on its own and it really won't become a wound care issue for you. Uh, next question, do I need a referral to go to the wound care program? The nice thing about uh, wound care, being a physician run clinic, um, you, it, a lot of it will depend on your insurance. If you do have an insurance that requires authorization to go to a specialist, then yes, you would need authorization through your HMO. If you have an insurance such as Medicare or PPO, for instance, you can self-refer. You don't need to get a referral because we're a physician-run clinic. We have physicians on staff. It's like going to see a specialist in their office. Just like if you had a PPO, Medicare, you could just go see an orthopedic. You wouldn't need authorization. You could make an appointment yourself. Same thing with the wound care center. But again, if you have an insurance that does require authorization, you do have to go through your, your family doctor to get to the wound care center. Um, Looks like maybe the last question, can I still exercise if I have a foot wound? That's a great question and it really depends on the foot wound. We typically, uh, if it's a diabetic foot ulcer and it's a high risk, we typically are gonna offload. We're gonna really ramp down that exercise very quick on that wound till we know it's stable. If you're non-diabetic, it really depends where the ulcer is, how bad it is, uh, where, you know, what type of footwear you're gonna exercise in. Again, exercise and foot ulcers, actually a fairly complex decision when to go back and how to pace it. And so we'll integrate that into the program as we get towards the tail end of wound healing and certainly on that last phase where we're into just teaching you prevention, uh, we'll integrate exercise into that. But if you have a foot ulcer, certainly diabetic, I would certainly ask a doctor, uh, preferably a wound care specialist before you could go out and exercise. And I'd focus on offloading until you get to that doctor. And I think I think that might be the last question that I see, but I want to thank you again, I mean, for uh, tuning in to Ask the Doctor. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, I really enjoy um, giving information to the community. I think it's really important, and I, and I do want to end again. If you have a serious wound, you know, in this pandemic, don't uh, delay care. It really is safe to come here, and you'll get comprehensive care. You'll get that wound healed fast and, and get back on with your life quickly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.